Hey everybody. So I wanted to have a quick chat about the old school tactical uh, gameplay that I had. And uh, you know, I have lots of thoughts and opinions on the title, but it's a little bit difficult to talk about it like I perhaps normally would in uh, kind of you know, the open and frank is what I think screw it kind of way that I typically do it. And a couple of reasons for that. One, it's still in its funding stage. Two, it's it's pre-release, right? So it's a I would call a beta game, right? It's not a it's not a finished game yet. It has some polishing and stuff that's required, and some rules revisions are still still being tweaked. In fact, you know we downloaded fresh uh, tables and stuff while we were playing uh, Vassal because they've just been changed for or the cards have been changed or something. So. Uh, you know, anything I've got to say about the game now may or may not apply when it's finished uh, because some of the feedback that came from me, the other gamer, uh, from Mark Walker, and even from Shane as we were watching may or may not make it into the finished product, but I certainly feel that some of those the things that we were commenting on you know, either should or, or will uh, make it into the game, uh, hopefully. Uh, so, so what do I think of the game? First, first up, first impressions are playing on Vassal because it's not, you know, the physical <laughs> physical copy of the game. It's pretty. Uh, the maps are going to, if the maps are anything equivalent to the pre other mounted maps that we've seen in other game systems, ASL, uh, uh, Conflict of Heroes, uh, Lock and Load, those types, those mounted maps with the uh, except with larger counters and much more, uh, I would call it more refined graphics, then I think the game's going to be visually really appealing. And uh, the counter art, I, I'm i in two minds on the counter art. I really like the vehicle art. Uh, I like the, the layout of the infantry counters. And I like the individual and I like the figures on the counters as well I think uh, part of me wants me to say I want the the figures on the on the man made on the man counters to be a little bit bigger but I haven't seen a physical counter and so I can't really say oh it's the right size or the wrong size because I can zoom in and zoom out with the vassal module so it was hard to say um, whose game was I playing the other day oh never know not another company uh, <clears throat> It's horrible. Anyway, um, it wasn't tactical or it wasn't in World War II, so uh, ignore that. Okay, so let's talk about the gameplay. So I think it's going to look good. I think you're going to be really excited, I, I hope, about the components from what I've heard. You know, three huge freaking maps, three or four counter sheets, a linked campaign with all the you know historical scenarios and stuff. See, I to I'm, I'm telling people, Mark telling people you're going to do these historical things and it better be legit dog we're going to be watching i'm going to get all the east front ocd guys to come and pick on your scenarios it's a joke that's a little in joke between mark and i um game play the heart of the game is the activation sequence uh you literally uh you, someone starts with initiative and then you roll, I think you roll for initiative afterwards or you, whoever has the most initiative points goes first. I forget. That's been a, three or four days now. Um, and you, and you go backwards and forwards trading uh, activations. You think, oh, okay, well that's kind of boring, but here's the cool thing is you do have these uh, different number of D6, depending on what the situation is, is in the game that uh, you, you roll and you either roll one, two or three or four or however many you roll. And that's the number of activations that you have for the turn. And so uh, your, your ability to pass or not pass is limited by whether you have more or less than the other guy or the same amount as the case may be. And then you go forward from there. Now, that can also happen as it did in our game where you've got 3d6 and you roll the same number as the other guy who's got 2d6 because he rolled well and then that, you know, you're thinking, well, gee, I'm going to be able to do what I want. Well, you can't. Now you've got the same amount of activation. So there's an immediate tension that, that hits the game and, and gives you a, ooh, what am I going to do? How am I going to handle this? And who's going to go first? And who should go first? And should I save this for a fire? Should I save this for an opportunity fire? Because opportunity fires cost two activations, I think. 
Uh, as you can see, I have a fantastic recall of what I played. Uh, I, and I had been drinking, here's the other qualifier, I had been drinking that evening, so uh, anything could have actually happened, I don't remember. Uh, so, so there's that. So that ten that is the underlying aspect of the game that's going to make it feel reasonably different from most other games, I think. Uh, the And it's not just that it's activation-based, it's that you've got to choose how many points you want to spend uh, and, and, you, and I feel like based on one gameplay that you're nearly always going to have just enough to do what you want to do uh, even at, and particularly as the defender uh, so um, let's talk about uh, so firing uh, the, the combat mechanic is just sweet because uh it need it, it it just works you know you've got five attack factors combat fire firepower factors what do you want to call them fp scf fcf whatever you've got five your uh, opponent has four uh, his defensive factor is four uh you have a plus one okay he's in uh protective terrain trees buildings whatever he gets an extra one okay so now it's back to zero uh, you have a uh, machine gun. You're going to use a machine gun. Well, I add two more. Okay, so now it's you're at plus two. Net it all out. Look at the minus five to plus seven column. Roll your dice and uh, and get a result. And there's four, I think, three or four results. Now, the only thing that this is a pet peeve of mine. You know, when I look at tables, I go to the top for the die roll number, and I look down to the bottom. It should be the Lowest number to the highest number. That ain't the way this table is. It starts at 12 and goes down. It's kind of annoying. So this, so it's little things like that that I think just need to be tweaked. And when I, that's what I'm talking about in terms of things that are a little odd to me. That was just off. I was always looking at the wrong spot on the table. But the combat worked really smoothly. You could sit there and go boom, 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 boom. This is what I get. Oh, I've got a leader in the hex. I get this. Oh, I moved. I don't get that. And you, you've got a little table and you just... Attacker and defender, work your work your uh, pluses and minuses out, and you're done. And it's very fast. Uh, there are a couple other areas where uh, you know we talk about refinements and oddities and peculiarities or things that need to be worked on, and that's uh, the leadership mechanic and what the the impact of leaders, uh, whether you're shooting at leaders or not shooting at leaders, uh, and then the other thing that I thought needed to be uh, made more readily apparent to the player based on a first play was I, I spent quite a bit of time uh, at one point working out is it better for me to close assault melee or is it better for me to sit back and shoot and if I'm going through that find them fix them flank them finish them thing I should be looking at shaking the enemy and then melaying with them. Now, I didn't get an opportunity to test that out. I, we really just kind of jumped in and started shoving pieces around so that we could shoot at stuff and see how things worked. And there were no real, I didn't apply any hardcore tactics per se, whatever tactics I have. Here's my hardcore game over here. Uh, I, well, there was none of that. We're just shoving shit on the board and moving things and hey, shoot me and see what happens. Uh, and then we started to get a little bit serious when it started to get a little more competitive once we got closer. And it's like, oh, wow, man, I really wish I hadn't moved that guy there. Uh, so, so there's this thing where you, you're, you're looking at should I or shouldn't I? And, and as I mentioned to uh, Mark, I think you know, it, it just ought to be obvious. Either you're attacking or you're not. And there should be no question about whether it should be better to sit back and shoot or finish the bad guys off, right? And that, uh, and I think there was just some, how that happens is very simple, but the choice th to make that action is, was not simple and, and not simple in a bad way. It should have been readily apparent to me. Yeah, I'm going in because this is going to happen. So, uh, there was that and that, and really when I look at it, they were the only things that kind of, uh, you know, bothered me about the game. I think the game will play fast. I think it will be fun. 
I like the luck cards because they're simple little things that's going to give you a tiny, potentially a tiny little edge at some point in time in the game. It's not four luck cards, then you're not drawing cards and doing stuff, I, I don't think. You're, you, you get a luck card and you use it once. Now, there might be scenarios where you get more luck cards. That'd be kind of cool, actually, I would think. Uh, and I also think it would be kind of cool if there were cards in it. That Someone else mentioned this on BGG, actually. There's cards that are a negative impact on your enemy. Uh, that would be kind of cool to have one of those cards in your hand. I would be comfortable if you had three cards for a scenario of seven turns. So another little point on, on things that were that felt a little awkward to me, and, and once again, it's okay. Counting down, uh, counting down the game turns as opposed to counting up the game turns. So we're not starting at game turn zero or game turn one, we're starting at game turn seven and we're counting down. Why, I don't know. Dude's Canadian, what can I tell you? you know? uh, so uh, th that's all I really wanted to say. And hopefully, uh, if I can be bothered editing this video, you'll be looking at four or five or six pictures of the game as we played uh, with a few little comments on it. But otherwise, you're just listening to my boring ass, and that's it. I would say, here's my here's the way I look at this. It's gonna be it's gonna get made. We're gonna get it, and whether we get it in July or we get it in August or we get it in December, I don't know. Right? These things always end up being delayed and slowed down. No matter what happens, I've got three freaking awesome maps that I can use with any of my other uh, tactical games and use them for pretty much any era I want. So I got three kick-ass maps for 50, 60, 70 bucks, whatever it is. Uh, so I got that. I have an East Front game, and I don't have an East Front World War II tactical game, and if it plays well to fair, then that's great. If it plays awesomely, you know, with some refinements and more playtesting and all the rest of it, that's even better because I really would like to play some uh, historical... Uh, scenarios from uh, the Stalingrad era. So, it's made its number. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to go and order it. You don't need to go buy it. You can pay freaking retail and wait till Mark's thousand copies come in and they've got it in the warehouse and you can pay freaking retail or you can pay 30% off on some online store. Or I don't even know where they're gonna sell. It. Or you can go get it now on the Kickstarter for 70 or 80 bucks and be done with it and, and own the whole thing. It'll be awesome. It's up to you, whatever you do, I don't really care. I'm just posting this up for the folks that wanted to know what I thought and because uh, I had a chance to have a little play test and I got I got all yah ya about it um, when uh, Mark uh, uh, announced the uh, the Kickstarter and I had a chance to have a look at the rules and, and goof around with it a bit beforehand. So, there it is. Adios, mofos.